Welcome. Well, I'm supposed to tell you within 20 minutes about uh, something that deserves a separate conference. But let me just uh, show you a, a bit of my world, which is about thoughts, emotions, an internal conflict of people addicted to pornography. Let me tell you more about it from the perspective of uh, cultural change. This is a topic that's uh, frequently raised uh, when you start analyzing what happens inside the minds of pornography afflicted people. Before lunch, I listened to one of the speakers and I want to protest because uh, we had, well, what's uh, so bad about this internet? Well, once people, well, all fam the whole families uh, were watching TV, now they are watching their smartphones. So what's so bad about it? Uh, well, there is a lot of bad about it. I'm sorry, but this is something totally different because it involves uh, pornography. Uh, with broad broadband um, internet access. And now let us not look at pornography uh, from the angle of whether it's uh, uh, nice or not nice, but let's take a medical perspective of what happens to human brains uh, contacting uh, a set of atypical stimuli which had been unprecedented for humans for thousands of years. Well, maybe uh, what you think about now is Hustler or VHS pornography, but we are talking about a different thing here. We are talking about a vast number of stimuli within a short time span. It um, evokes changes in the brain, resulting in uh, what I might call a chronic brain condition. How does it influence an individual and uh, the society? How will it influence the culture? Uh, let me shed some light uh, on it uh, in my short time. Let me focus on uh, two notions being uh, uh, sexualization and pornography only. I'm not going to go into details because this is not um, the right time or place for it. I'd like to tell you about um, sexuality inadequately imposed on a person. Now we tend to talk a lot about educating children and showing them everything because that's their right. There is a special convention uh, providing for their rights. However, after all, children had to be uh, have, had to have to have the ability of uh, uh, taking in the content they are given. Uh, we tend to say, well, we should uh, uh, tell the children as much as uh, possible and as early as possible. But it's uh, not necessarily always uh, true. But let me uh, use a case of developing the image of uh, this lady and mass culture. This is Miley Cyrus, and she's become a symbol of cultural change. Miley Cyrus uh, was a good girl. Hannah Montana, a series uh, for families based on family values. And then she turned 15 and became a carrier for money makers out there. Mass culture uh, experts uh, took her in, and she started drifting. Well, uh, the story of Miley Cyrus shows you in a nutshell what happens to culture, because it goes without saying that culture is uh, changing. Maybe we don't know where it's all heading and what it's all about. But anyway, Miley Cyrus's image started um, being sold consistently. Um, it was a slightly different image than before. Uh, she quite fast dropped the image of a good girl, and she um, became uh, eroticized, uh, uh, like images from a, um, a pornography uh, movies. Maybe I um, should uh, show you a pornography clip at this point, but maybe it's beyond your sensitivity, thinking about your kids. 
Well, I think it's uh, beyond all doubt that this picture with her dad is very eroticized. And now it all started. This is her concert in Brooklyn, where she uh, was acting very sexually or pornographically even. So Miley Cyrus shows you how the culture changes. In order to understand uh, what happens out there, we have to understand the changing uh, language of culture. Now, I know that the majority of you were raised on words, um, words on paper, uh, press articles and uh, books, but now uh, the culture is all about uh, the image, which has uh, a bearing on the whole reality. Now you do not uh, uh, you do not write political uh, uh, mocking articles. Now you create memes. Maybe that's why the change made to Miley Cyrus and other pop stars or salads. This is uh, her concert, and I think you don't have any doubts anymore about the pornography, pornographic context of it, merging what's acceptable and what's pornographic. Some further pictures of Miley Cyrus. This is what you can find on YouTube. She's still suggestive of pornography, but uh, of pornography anyway. Well, to give you the full picture, let me tell you about commercialization of uh, sex. Sex is ubiquitous, used for advertising, for sales, which, of course, has... Uh, a bearing on uh, our culture. Note the picture to the right, how erotic it is. Now let me quote the American uh, researcher of uh, pornography, Janet Nice. This is a symbol. This is an adult uh, movie star. And she said, it seems that uh, currently girls arrive at uh, uh, the film location ready for porn. So, well, but what does it mean to be ready for porn? Who of you sitting here can imagine just entering the film location and started uh, and uh, starting to play porn? What does it mean uh, being ready for porn? It's about being ready to arrive, undress, and start acting. Well. What it means is just that uh, adolescents are ready for porn nowadays. So ready for what? I'm not going to show you a film or print screens because uh, uh, it might be too much. Uh, the content is very graphic. And I can assure you that the world uh, our children explore is even more brutal and graphic than that. In pornography, women are referred to as. Let's have a look at those notions. Let's have a look at what happens in a young person's brain and personality when day by day by day they build uh, an image of a woman uh, based on uh, pornography. And then what happens to women or girls who, who want to make a presence in this world, who want to be wanted? 
note that girls, I think we all see it, try to be just a little bit of a slut, but not overdo it. Because if they overdo it, they run the risk of ostracism. But if they are less than that, they might be mocked and uh, made fun of. Well, uh, we have not enough time, but let's uh, um, leave this topic for a while. I think uh, you have no doubts anymore that it's a brutal world, a world of contempt for humans, a world of contempt for um, interpersonal relationships, devoid of love and being with others. The future. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, pornography is uh, being escalated. It's changing. It must produce new things because um, the addiction requires stronger and stronger stimuli. Since we've already accepted the image, there is uh, internet pornography, uh, but uh, let's not be deluded. It will continue to evolve. This is a new trend today. Today's trend is um, mm, making young women appear children. Today, 80% of uh, internet views are teens uh, or uh, adolescents. And there, you find women who are styled as if they were children. Because today, porn pornography is drifting towards child pornography. In a brief summary, this is the global phenomenon. So what we're dealing with. But let me pay your, draw your attention to the following. Ladies and gentlemen, if any one of you thinks that we are dealing with a niche phenomenon, Take a look at this. 42% of boys in, the, in middle school masturbate daily and watch porn every day. This is not uh, marginal. When I hear this, I'm sorry to say it, but when I hear that there are new programs being established in order to teach people sexual education, um, and there are disputes about uh, Christian sexual education, etc. L ladies and gentlemen, we simply got lost. Um, what kind of curricula can there be? Ch children build uh, up their sexuality on the basis of pornography, and this is something that cannot be changed. I mean, I'm looking at the clock, which is ticking. I don't have time uh, to tell you exactly what happens with personality, what happens with personality structure if they are brought up with the use of pornography, what kind of implica implications that entails. Ladies and gentlemen, it's practically irreversible. And we're talking about creating curricula or programs. Uh, well, uh, it's a joke. Uh, children need to be um, detached from pornography now. Well, they have the right of choice, people say. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's as if we were uh, giving out leaflets. You cannot use drugs with one hand and with the other. Uh, you uh, would found, found a cocaine shop at school. It's as if we established uh, effective programs for children to refrain from drinking and at the same time um, sell little alcohol bottles to them, 200 grams of vodka, you know, what they look like, the little bottles. The change of perception uh, of the role and social position of women. I don't have time to discuss all, all this, to discuss all this, but let me assure you that this image is horrendous. There is no time, but let me just draw your attention to what I hear from my patients, who, of course, uh, tell me, well, patients don't come to me because they are addicted to pornography. They come because they have to face the consequences. They lose uh, interest in sexual intercourse with another human being, for example. And uh, uh, 
perhaps they say, well, if they are kind to one another in a marriage, and here I quote, I quote uh, a slide of one of the associations. This is a simple addiction. People say, well, perhaps if uh, um, both of um, the concerts in a marriage uh, get addicted to pornography, perhaps that it will get better. Don't believe in it. Um, well, sooner or later, one goes with their computer to one room and the other to the other room with a computer. And then they say, we haven't touched each other for five years, doctor. This is how it works. Well, this is the addiction cycle, but pornography, um, internet pornography, or the broadband pornography, or the pornography that provides you with um, non-standard amount of stimuli over time, over a time unit, that that causes changes in the brain, thanks to brain imaging. Today, we can even document that. We had suspected it was that way, but today we can just measure the quantity of dopamine produced um, due to certain stimuli, and we know that the quantity of um, do, um, th that quantity is similar to what you get after coke. So it's similar. Um, the changes that go in that go on in your brain is similar to the changes in the brain of a cocaine addict. So what happens is people totally use their t totally lose their free will. People become enslaved, and my patients come to me with such problems. Of course, they come with the consequences, but we very often discover the enslavement. I do something that I don't want to be doing. I'm full of in inner conflicts because after after I finished, after acting out, after a night spent with pornography, because. Well, somebody thinks, well, he just watched it and he um, masturbated himself. No, they do it all night. And in the morning, I am a person who hates themselves, who contempts themselves, and who uh, knows one thing. Even if I promise I will not do it again, of course, I will do it. And this is the reason for suffering. That's why people come to my practice. That's why we cannot be deluded um, as for the um, far-reaching consequences. This is um, an image I found on the internet. And I'd like to tell you why we're talking about culture. At the fourth level of addiction, all kinds of activities from the morning, uh, you need to undertake activity aimed at reducing sexual um, tension. These people are not monsters. Uh, I, well, perhaps some people here in this room are addicted. I, ha I get a few new patients after every lecture I deliver. This is the truth. But ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at this. Take. Let's take a look at 42 or 43 percent of people. More and more people start their adult life with such a formative structure of their personality. Uh, I'm, I'm really sorry, two more sentences. I know we my time is up. But when we talk about personality, we mm, got reminded of the nightmare of the beginning of the 20th century. And this is an unwanted topic. Let's uh, respect diversity. Let's uh, uh, respect the others, the otherness. Uh, it's something important for everyone. Um, but we're talking about damaging someone's uh, personality when people become rigid, when they become stiff, when their personality doesn't allow them to adjust to the external world, when their reactions are stiff, no matter what the consequences are. And this is what pornography leads to. Let's not be deluded, ladies and gentlemen. These people grow up. 42% of boys, some of them will become priests, some will become judges, some will become teachers, and some just uh, physical workers. And those people will and will have expectations that the world will change to suit their insight, and not their insight will adjust to the external world. I cannot describe it at the moment. I uh, 
will have to leave you and ask you to imagine what the world could look like in 20 years' time if we allowed ourselves uh, to have a whole generation stolen. Pornography experts, there are not many, um, in order uh, to um, earn money for another plane or for another gold watch, Rolex, um, they have stolen our children and they bring them up in, our, in their world of pornography. I will leave you with the question what the world will look like in 10 years' time. Thank you very much.